How many of you remember the brick lady? Press a one in the chat room if you remember the brick lady. How many of y'all remember the brick lady? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. The brick lady. Now, this is an individual who decided to pretend that she got hit in the face with a brick and then blamed it on brothers, blamed it on black men. And didn't just blame it on black men. She then took it a step further and tried to defraud the people by garnering empathy and support through GoFundMe. Well, guess what happened? The woman known as Brick Lady charged in Houston after being accused of making whole thing up, raising 42K on GoFundMe. Oh yes, the city of Houston has brought charges against this woman. A woman who went viral on social media after making claims a man assaulted her with a brick outside a Houston club is now accused of raising tens of thousands of dollars in a GoFundMe scam. Rhoda Osman, 33, has been charged with felony theft by deception. According to char charging documents, Osman raised at least $40,000 through a fraudulent GoFundMe page she started in September that claimed she was the victim of a similar attack more than three years ago. How it started, on September 3rd, Houston police officers responded to an aggravated assault incident. They met Osman and her female friend. During the investigation, officers reported that Osman was intoxicated, hostile, and irate. In the original police report made at the scene, Osman claimed that she was walking on Schumacher Lane, where an unknown man threw a brick at her when she would not give him her phone number, court documents show. She also told officers she had ordered an Uber and believed the brick throwing suspect was the Uber driver. Osman said she got into the car with him where he then tried to kidnap her. According to documents, Osman stated the suspect was involved in human trafficking and had a large group of women in the car with him. A follow-up investigation began. On September 15th, detectives tried to reach Osman, but the number she provided was her friend's number, who was also at the scene when the incident was reported. The friend said she was not from Houston and went out to several places to drink with Osman, documents show. She said Osman reportedly called her male friends to come pick her up, to come pick them up, excuse me. When the men arrived, Osman and the friend got into their vehicle, which was dark, a dark colored sedan. The, women, the woman told investigators that she got into the right front passenger seat and Osman in the back seat with another man. As they were driving, she reportedly heard Osman yell, ouch, why you hit me? But stated that she did not hear an argument before she heard Osman yell. Osman's friend further details incident. The friend stated off the record that she did not believe Osman was hit with a brick according to charging documents. The friend told detectives the suspect who allegedly assaulted Osman got out of their vehicle, got into another vehicle and drove off. 
She said Osman went live on Instagram and that she tried to convince Osman to call the police. The friend said she did not know the two men she got into the car with and would not be able to positively identify suspects involved according to documents. Osman gives statement to detectives. The detective finally made contact with Osman on September 19th. During the phone call, during the phone interview, Osman told the detective that her friend came to town and picked all the clubs they went to that night. They reportedly stated, they reportedly started at the O2 lounge and then went to the liquid lounge. Osman said as they left the club, she called an Uber. According to the charging documents, when the dark colored sedan pulled up, Osman thought it was the Uber she had called and got inside. Osman told the detectives that's when the suspect hit her in the face with a brick. So he was sitting in the car with a brick in his hand. He just happened to have a brick in his hand. She also stated that she did her own investigation and found out it was a man named Olan Douglas who assaulted her. When Osman was asked where was her friend at the time, she reportedly became upset and said, her friend was far away from her while talking to another guy. Osman then changed her story to say she was assaulted at the Liquid Lounge Club. After more questioning the Houston police detective from the Houston police detective, Osman became upset, asked to speak with the detective supervisor, and then hung up. The detective said he still provided her the name of his sergeant. Surveillance video tells another story. We finally getting the truth of everything that happened. So it says, surveillance video tells another story. On September 20th, Houston police detectives canvassed the area where the assault was reported and spotted surveillance cameras in the 5600 block of Schumacher. Schumacher. The company that owns the cameras provided detectives with footage from them. Charging documents show. Oh my God. So, so let, let's, before I go any further, before I go any further, I got to point out the irony in this, right? I got to point out the irony in this. Part of the reason this chick goes viral is because she's one of those chicks that likes to proclaim that black women get the worst treatment in the world. She's one of these people that claims that, you know, they try to use the Malcolm X quote, the black woman is the most unprotected woman, blah, 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 all of that stuff, right? So you got these women on social media that love to claim that black women get the most mistreatment out of every type of woman, right? Here's my question. If you as a man told the police that somebody assaulted you with a brick and the police detective asked you how it happened and then they asked your homeboy how it happened and the story was conflicting, would they take that investigation any further? Exactly. They're going to close that case. They're not going to investigate any further. In fact, they might even tell you that filing a false police report is a crime. They might even tell you that. But with this lady, they have conflicting stories and they still felt the need to go canvas the area and get surveillance footage and continue investigating. So this woman could make up a story the same way, because if you remember, the chick down there in Alabama made up a story. Look at all the manpower and man hours that went into looking for this woman. See, that, that lie about black women being unprotected and all of that stuff, it, it, it's not a reality today. 
It's not a reality today. If you are a woman today, all you have to do is call the police or say that you need help and everybody's coming out the woodwork. Let's, let's stop this, right? So it says, in the footage, the man that Osman claimed hit her, Olin Douglas, was also identified. Detectives said Douglas, Osman, and her friend were seen talking amongst each other and walking towards TikTok Garden Lo Lounge, located in the 5600 block of Schumacher Lane. They all reportedly went inside the club together. About 20 minutes later, the video shows the trio walk outside the club, then walk towards a white Maserati that was parked directly on the side of the business. Douglas was reportedly seen leaning on the right front passenger door while Osman walked towards him. According to documents, the surveillance footage shows that Osman started dancing on Douglas while her friend was in the front seat of the vehicle talking to another man. So basically twerking on him, right? The video then reportedly shows all four people get inside the Maserati. The unidentified man got into the driver's seat. The friend got into the right passenger seat and Osman and Douglas enter the back according to documents a few minutes later douglas was reportedly seen getting out of the back right side and then osman and her friend also got out according to charging documents so basically the story that the friend told was true osman and douglas were in an argument and douglas reportedly swung his right hand while holding what appeared to be a plastic water bottle and struck Osman. <laughs> so it was a water bottle. <laughs> Detective said Osman then sat in the front passenger seat of the vehicle while Douglas stepped away from her. He reportedly got into the back seat of an Audi a3 that had pulled up when osman got out of the vehicle detective said the unidentified man who was driving it took off the footage captured the incident the footage capturing the incident did not support osman's recorded statement charging documents show Brick Lady's story goes viral on social media. When Osman went live on Instagram after the incident, she went viral on social media. On September 4th, a day after the alleged assault was reported, a GoFundMe account was created and listed Osman as the beneficiary. The account raised $42,302 as of October 25th, 2023 according to the charging documents it stated that she was attacked by a black male as she was walking down the street because she declined to give him her phone number the report read the page reads woman gets hospitalized after allegedly being hit in the face with a brick by a man she refused to give her number the alleged incident happened in Houston. She says she was surrounded by men who did absolutely nothing. She says the man got in the car and left the scene after assaulting her and is afraid he will never get caught. The viral, viral video link on the GoFundMe still directs to an Instagram account. The video received more than 1 million likes. A link to Rhoda's external injuries redirects a to TikTok and currently shows the video as unavailable. The GoFundMe account is reportedly frozen after several donators reported it as fraudulent. TikToker provides police information on Osman's false claim 
past alleged scams. During the investigation, detectives said they received a call from Daphne Sutton, a mental health advocate and blogger on TikTok. Shout out to the queen of accountability. Who believed Osman was conducting a scam because of a similar situation that happened in Minneapolis in 2020. She reportedly provided detectives with another GoFundMe account that was created by or for Osman in 2020 with the same narrative of a black man hitting her. Sutton made TikToks about the incident and said some of Osman's friends and ex-roommates also reached out to her to provide a statement. Detectives reached out to Minneapolis Police Department to ask about the GoFundMe title, Help Black Muslim Mother Pay Her Medical Bill. Documents read. <clears throat> the description stated a young black Muslim single mother was viciously assaulted by private security in Minneapolis, sustaining multiple facial contusions, a black eye, and injuries to her leg. She needs an estimated 5K to pay for medical bills, legal fees, and a new phone and more. The Minneapolis Police Department told the Houston Police Department that it has not received any reports of Osama being assaulted in 2020. Ooh. The department stated that the last contact officers had with Osman was in 2012 for public lewdness and disorderly conduct. Yeah. Mm, mm. I knew he was going to get the truth sooner or later. I knew he was going to get the truth sooner or later. Shout out to Thomas. Appreciate you. Shout out to, to Sean. He said, fire show as always. Shout out to Wendell. He said, but she ain't have lawyer present. Bet she ain't have lawyers present. You know she didn't. Shout out to Terrell. He said, why carry the blicky? when you can carry the bricky. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. The ex-roommate of Osman also reached out and told detectives that she and Osman were no longer friends after discovering Osman was scamming people and she wanted no part of it. She said Osman reportedly created the GoFundMe in 2020, claiming that someone hit her, but it was a lie. At the time of this writing, Osman has not been arrested. Osman's criminal history, according to court records, Osman was, Osman has several prior charges in the Virgin Islands, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Hennepin County, Minnesota, Williamson, Co Williamson County, Texas, and Travis County, Texas. Osman is currently on bail for a separate offense from September 2020, uh, 22, excuse me, September 22nd, 2023, for felony assault and domestic violence. So she's out on bail right now for felony assault and domestic violence. She was charged with two accounts of misdemeanor domestic violence in Steele County, Minnesota. The Harris County District Attorney's Office is asking the court to enter a 50,000 bail on the theft by deception charge she now faces here. A spokesperson 
for GoFundMe sent us the following statement. GoFundMe has zero tolerance for the misuse of our platform and cooperates with law enforcement investigations of those accused of wrongdoing. The go the, the fundraiser has been re the fundraiser has been removed from the platform. All donors have been refunded and Rhoda Osman has been banned from using the platform for any future fundraisers. It is not unusual for GoFundMe to pursue legal recourse against those who exploit the generosity of its giving community. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so GoFundMe might actually sue her. Now, here's the here's what's so sweet about this. Here's what's so sweet about this. The woman that wrote this article is a black woman. That's what I'm talking about. Right on, sister. Shout out to Brittany Taylor, award-winning journalist, mother, YouTuber, social media guru, millennial, mentor, storyteller, University of Houston alumni, and Houston native. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to all of the stand-up black women out there. Shout out to the stand-up black women. Is my, is my shit working? And to Rhoda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we now. Earlier today, earlier today, I just happened to catch MTR talking about this exact topic. And from what I understand, and shout out to Deacon, he said, keep exposing them, AM, appreciate you. From what I understand, a warrant was issued for her arrest, but they haven't been able to find her. A warrant has been issued for her arrest. Oh snap, that is B Taylor. <laughs> That's B Taylor. <laughs> oh my God. That is B Taylor. <laughs> Y'all ain't shit. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. They squabbling out there now. Yeah. Ooh, wee. Oh my God. <laughs> That's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> of all people. Oh my God. Shout out to B Taylor. <laughs> Shout out to B Taylor for exposing these scamming B dubs. You feel me? <laughs> oh my goodness. That is hilarious.